Hey fellow cakewalkers, Dan here on the NAM showroom floor in 2015 and I wanted to go over a few of the features that are inside of Sonar Platinum. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. So the first thing I want to take a look at is the new control bar. Some of you may have heard about it, some of you may have seen some pictures of it, but we're going to show you right here in this demo what's going on with it. So right along here inside of the control bar, what we've done is we've added some new functionality to it. Inside of here, uh, you can scroll left and right using these arrows, and you can even use a scroll wheel on your mouse to scroll left and right. Look at that functionality there. So another thing that we've added to this right here is that you can also drag and drop these modules around. Before, it's worked a, a little bit differently. It hasn't been as slick as this, but what we've done now is we've added this animation that works wonderfully. Next, if you right click and you look at these modules right here, you can assign them, you can deassign them any way you want. You can resize the modules to an auto mode, which allows you to drag and drop these around. You can go ahead and you can assign these to a large state, and that'll see all the different modules in a larger state. And then you can also go in here and you can access the medium states and the, and the smaller states of these modules. So each, each state, each module has a, has a medium state now, each state has a small state right now, and you can see that right here as well. So that's some of the new functionality in the control bar, and what's going on with it is it just allows for a better, more fluid, and accurate use all the high-level functions of Sony. You can also collapse this thing, and you can even go in and, uh, you can even, uh, let's see right here, uh, collapse the whole thing if you want and that animation shows up along the top here. So it's pretty cool, pretty versatile. It's a brand new feature inside of Sonar Platinum. Next I want to get into mixed recall. Some of you may have seen uh, pictures, some of you may have seen some of the blog posts that I've been doing about it, but it's a really killer new feature inside of Sonar. Uh, so let's, let's jump into that. So mixed recall essentially is a way to save and switch between multiple mix scenes inside of Sonar. So if we hit the play button, let's listen to this track. Now let's say the band wanted me to go ahead and do just the vocals. I can easily scroll down to the vocal track, solo it out, and then I go to my mix recall and I save this as a brand new scene. And I'll call it vocal only. Save that, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to recall the previous scene and show you how this works. It recalls, goes to the full band. Now we hit the recall button. Now my vocals are soloed. Come play with me. Let's recall it again. We'll do another one. So we'll go back up and then we'll go to our guitar section. We'll solo that out, save that as a brand new scene. Now we got a, now we got all our guitars solo. Whereas if we recall it, stop it, it goes back to the stereo mix. Same functionality again. So if we want to jump into our mix view, we can do the same thing with, let's say, uh, bus compression or bus processing. We'll unsolo our guitars in here. We'll make a brand new save scene right here, just clicking the save as new scene. And we'll call it bus processing maybe uh, one or something. Turn that on, go to our bus processing. We'll open up a brand new feature in here, go to uh, some sort of acoustic guitar thing, and we'll save that. Then. Uh, let's go and we'll put in another Pro Channel preset right here. We'll go to uh, bus and we'll go to or we'll go to the bass feature, right? And we'll save that as a brand new one, bus processing two, right? Now we can jump between the two different scenes. So we'll recall that. All the effects get changed. There they are, changed. And we'll recall the previous one and they change again. And these are all saved inside the session. They're not saved uh, you know, elsewhere. They're just saved right in your project file. And you can access them easily just from this menu right here. And you can delete the scenes. You can manage them and do everything you want from there. So that's the mixed recall. We're really excited about it. We're really hoping that everybody's excited about it. Um, so far, I'm having a great time with it. Uh, next, I want to show you guys a pattern tool. So the pattern tool is an upgrade to our MIDI composition. If you open up your MIDI, MIDI comp view and you go into any type of MIDI pattern, what you can essentially do is you can now select um, any pattern using the pattern tool, which is right here under your draw tool. You select it and you draw it. So if I want to grab this entire drum passage and I want to redraw it in another location, uh, copying and pasting can be somewhat cumbersome. So now with the pattern tool, all you do is lasso by right clicking and then you just paint it. 
and that's it. You can paint it across anything, anywhere, in the piano roll view, in the track view. Uh, if you want to change the tonal center of a melody, you can do the exact same thing. You just hold shift, and you just change the tonal center. And what that does is it makes for a really, really quick, quick use of this feature. Another great way to use this is inside the track view, like I was saying. You can go in, select a, a MIDI clip with the pattern tool, and then just draw it. You can back it up. If you didn't like what you, heard, what you were doing, you can paint it, back up, paint it some more, maybe you missed a part, back it up a little bit right here, you know, and it, and it just, you know, it works. So inside the browser, uh, this also works too. If you're using a MIDI groove clip and you're looking for, maybe you're, you know, going through your library of MIDI groove clips, uh, maybe you find some drum parts that you like, use the pattern tool and select a MIDI clip. Then you just draw that MIDI clip from the browser. You don't even have to import MIDI at all. Select another clip, do it there, select another clip, draw it there. And it's just really, really fluid. And uh, yeah, so that's that's the pattern tool. If you guys want to check that out again, it's inside the uh, smart tool, right under um, right under the freehand draw tool, and with all the other uh, really cool little features that we get inside the MIDI composition. So let's go over the last feature that I'm really excited about inside of Sonar Platinum. It's a Platinum exclusive feature only, and it uh, what it is is called Vocal Sync. Um, if you guys know what Vocal Line is, it's a technology that allows you to sync two audio streams of data together. And what you essentially do is you're listening to a track, maybe something like uh, this track right here, and you hear some flaming happening inside the vocal track. So we'll split this out, and what we'll do is we'll uh, change this, and I'll go back to my smart tool, and uh, we'll listen to this, this part real quick. And things you think you know, you know, but one thing's for sure is that you don't know what you're missing, though. So if you listen to that closely, you know, and things you think you know, you know, but one thing's for sure is that you don't know what you're missing, though. You hear there's a lot of flaming going on in those vocals. It's kind of, uh, it's kind of awful, actually. Um, you know, so Vocal Sync allows us to cure this by going in, and what you essentially do is you just open up a region effect with Vocal Sync. Click on it, and what happens is in this little HUD right here. You select a uh, your guide track right here, and then what happens is Vocal Sync analyzes this dub track, and it sets the guide track to the dub track, and it uses the guide track to adjust the audio to the actual guide track. So in here, if you open this view up, you'll see that now my guide track is actually uh, moving around a little bit. It's actually com compressing and expanding, and it's using the analysis of this. Uh, audio track right here to adjust it to it. So that flaming was happening like right around in here. So I'm gonna adjust it so that that's a little better, maybe like right there. And then I'm gonna render it out. Now you're gonna hear something completely different than what we just heard. But one thing's for sure. So we'll go and we'll hit this loop button right here and I'll just loop this for you. No one thinks you think you know you know. There are things you know and things you think you know you know. As opposed to before, it was this. There are things you, you know and things you think you know you know. Now it's this. There are things you know and things you think you know you know. Completely synced. But one thing's for sure is that you don't know what you're missing. So, if you have this vocal sync enabled right here, you can see under the hood that when you're actually using it, you can see what's being stretched and what's not being stretched. So, right in here you can see that there's the blue is being expanded, the red is being compressed, and the black is unaffected. So. What it's doing is analyzing the phonemes of this track and then using it to uh, basically quantize this part to it. So let's take a look at that again. I'll back this up and we'll undo what we were doing right here. Select it, we'll listen to it. There are things you know and things you think you know you know, but one thing's for sure. And what you notice is that right here there's flaming in you know you know. That's the part that we're really looking at. I'll right click on the clip, region effects, vocal sing, create region effects. I adjust it right about there, then I render. And now it's synced. There are things you know and things you think you know you know. As we're before. There are things you know and things you think you know you know. There are things you know and things you think you know you know. Why does it have the render button instead of, does it give you your, it's, it's best guess first? Or what do you mean? When, when it's syncing it up, you would think that, that it would do the best job. Be, by over, looking over the, the entire thing. 
The render just bounces the audio because what you're doing is you're applying a region effect, okay, much yeah. like you would. So if you're looking at if you're looking at this right here and you're inside of let's say uh, your okay, so I don't mean render I mean the, 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 the oh the knob yeah. oh okay well the thing about vocal sync is that this knob is a strength button it tells you it allows you to adjust and customize the way the stretching is happening to the audio files okay. so you can stretch nothing. Or you can stretch all the way to, I think it's under the hood, it's about 400% is what we, we max out at. So you use this button as kind of a sweet spot because VocalSync's algorithm, it's not, uh, it's not specific to any type of vocal. It's kind of one of those things where you got to find the sweet spot. So for this vocal, it works right about here. But let's say we have another vocal and it's even more in sync. We only need that to be as strong as right here. You know what I mean? So it allows you to find a nice sweet spot. Yeah. You don't have to sit there and you know plug in, let's say, like 100% or like 50% every time. It, it makes you look at your waveform. It makes you listen to it, render it, and you're like, oh, you know, you know. that was all right. Or maybe it was right here. And you're like, you think you know, you know. that wasn't enough. So you back it up. I'll go back into it. So you back it up, open it up, and you put it a little bit stronger, which is right here. So it's kind of like a sweet spot, you know? But once you get it right... You think you know, you know. There are things you know and things you think you know, you know. It's perfect. Okay. Yeah. It's the same exact idea as if I was a Dragon 5 filter, and I was like, all right, I got this cool feature right here. Where is it? You know, and I want to... I set it and... There are things you know and things you think you know, you know. There are things you know and things you think you know, you know. There are things you know and things you think you... And then it's the same idea of just right-clicking on that and bouncing that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's kind of what's going on with that. You guys got any questions?